live. What up, what up? Thanks for stopping by, man. Hey, what's up? I'm glad we uh, connected at the, what well, like, did you say earlier? The, the coffee coffee shop seems like the club now. The coffee shop club. Yeah, man. So it's like, <laughs> I just, yeah, so I saw you the other day, and like, I feel like I've see, been seeing you a lot, uh, mostly due to Zendo being right there, and um, what was it, like... Uh, Zeus was there, and and Jesus from Jesus Canvas was there. Canvas was there, and you were, it was kind of a cool little moment for us all to be there. Well, yeah, I, I wanted you to have have you on. Um, technically, you're the you're the first one. Oh, on cool. The podcast. Oh man, no um, pressure. <laughs> no, 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 I'm the I'm the one who sets the tone. My yeah. bad. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess Thank so, you. Man. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's a little bit more pressure on me, but um, true. I just wanted to have you on because I like I was telling you earlier. I just really admire how you're handling um this new new life we're living in you know and uh i just want to like you know just pick your brain talk to you about go through some of your process even on some of your art and stuff you know all, all this other stuff plus you're just like when well, you're always just like such a unique uh like member of this community too you know and i appreciate that i love it I bro could, i could yeah. see that sometimes i, see. I guess i yeah. i don't know i never see my uniqueness sometimes when people tell me i'm unique and stuff like that i appreciate it because i'm like well what do they see in me that's unique and it kind of helps me like it's i find my like i'm finding myself like i'm fine like i see how others view me and i'm like well why do they view me like that and then it mm -hmm. helps me understand some stuff about myself because mm -hmm. you know so you kind of you kind of like hearing like how people perceive you in some sense uh yeah but not in like in the sense of like i'm like why do they perceive me like that because like we all have our own personal views of ourselves yeah, you know and um yeah i've always had you know we all as artists we all we have those we have those times where we're very hard on ourselves and you, you we don't, don't you don't have to tell me twice man i know how you feel um but I, I really want to let's start off with talking more about like you were talking you started to tell me about uh your like daily like routine and everything and how um you start the day off with, oh like, earlier meditation you know and just kind of give me a walkthrough of that you know? um so i i listen to like a lot of pod like not even podcasts like youtube videos i can't remember half the people's names so i can't just shout names off but like i remember one of the dudes but uh everyone i've watched or every book i've read on how to like like I just it's like we start our day off sometimes with a lot of stuff on our minds especially as artists yeah. I think the reason our art art is so our art is the reason we can do art is because we're overthinkers but mm. we all because like for me personally I it trips me out like when I'm sitting there painting something I have no idea what I'm gonna do and then I try these 20 30 different techniques sometimes or like ways to figure stuff out and it's and uh i think that's where the overthinking is cool because you're mm. like you'll you'll try something 20 different ways to find the thing that works but there's also that part of us where we need to like for myself i don't i'm like and most artists i'm sure where that voice needs to like it's gotta be calm and mm. so every so i've always wanted to calm that voice because it like we always there's no way to calm our thoughts like that's yeah. the one thing, but meditation through, and it's always like meditation, meditation, meditation. And I'm one of those people where I don't like sitting still and all that. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. like my bike rides were a big meditation thing, but I had yeah. to learn the sitting meditation is way more important because when you wake up in the morning, like now I've been doing this thing where I don't touch my phone for half an hour. Like I yeah. have an, I have an alarm that wakes me up and I have an alarm that goes off 20 minutes later and that's when my meditation's over like as soon as my alarm goes oh. off i'm like cool you got to sit up in bed do your breathing and set the tone for your day because all these things i watch would say meditation meditation i'm like and i've been fighting it for years because i'm like well i'll go ride my, like even like i love riding my bike and stuff now mm -hmm. but that morning sitting with yourself you know so i do 20 minute meditation and then the other for and then once that's done i'll make my bed because this one guy i listened to said Mm. If you make if your bed's made in the morning, you've accomplished one goal of the day, and that sets your whole day. No. Who said, who said that? He. It was some military dude. See, I'm very, I'm very <laughs> bad about like I'm yeah. terrible at like I'm. Well, man, I love they, the knowledge, yeah. but yeah. a lot of times I forget. Uh, that's that's nice. no, dude. Uh, as a fellow stoner, I always forget, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible with names and shit. But like, I think it's important, man, because that routine. Um, 
a lot of people think like meditation is like, well, you should just apply it randomly throughout your life whenever you feel some kind of way. But there is something about routine and ritual, you know. So like uh, the, these phones are like good for like a lot of things like that. They're like an awesome reminder. Something that's like an extension of yourself, you know. Yeah, so, but um, one thing I was listening to, yeah. they said – the minute we wake up, if that's the first thing we go to, all, like whatever, you know, like we all have triggers. Everyone, I'm oh, sure yeah. most people know what a trigger is. And a lot of times you'll go on your Instagram right away, whatever's bugging you the, or whatever social media outlet yeah. and boom, it's all right there. So that's why I'm like, I give myself that 20 minutes. I really try not to go on the the thing for about an hour or two. I, like, I, I work out and listen to music mostly in the morning just yeah. to kind of set the day and then there comes a point where I'm like, cool, I got, you know, so I, my business, I have oh. to look at Instagram, yeah, like the I mean, social media a lot. I feel you too, man. Like it's, it's weird. Cause Instagram for me, especially has got like a, it's got such a reward system, especially for artists, you know, cause especially if you're trying to sell work off of Instagram, it's that's a reward system. You're like, I make money off of this app. So like you're like, like, well, I can make money off it today or something, you know, or I mean, normal everyday people, they brought, they get the instant, the, the gratification of like, well, someone like my, my selfie or like that's, the, I try yeah. to steer away from that. But like I got, as that's artists, hard. you have that other thing attached to it, you know? Oh yeah. Our, our ego. <laughs> the, I mean, yeah, dude, exactly. Dude, the ego does go with it. You know, it's an ego building thing. Um, and and I, I can feel that definitely um, like struggling with that. But at the same time, you know, you have to be a part of it if you're going to survive in this shit at the same time. I feel know? like we need to, not give it so much like especially now like back in the old days the before four as i like to call it the before fours um, <laughs> yeah there we go you know it was like one of those things throughout the day you would check it and stuff and now everyone's like you know i work i'm working and stuff now and i go i go to the river every morning and mm -hmm. do a walk or bike ride but w that's still like the only way we're really a lot of us are really socializing now and keeping in oh. touch with people and oh yeah but a lot Even of, but so, you know, like right now there's so much stuff being fed into it where like I get, I've lately, I've been going on maybe an hour or two a day because I'm just kind of over it. So but you'll like limit yourself. You'll actually put it like, oh, this is my I, whole hour right here. You know? Yeah. Cause if not, like there's just too much energy, things feeding different energies, mm -hmm. you know? And I like, we're artists, we're empathetic no. we, or yeah. Is that the word? Empaths. Yeah. So for the most we, part, yeah, yeah, we take on a lot of Some that of stuff. Us aren't. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> myself. Some of us are, some of us aren't. Some of us for are. me personally, <laughs> someone can be putting something and I can attach feeling or whatever to it, and yeah. I, it like will sit with me all day. And I'm like, that even ha I has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? I just get like, yeah. I don't like the energy of it sometimes, but it's a very useful tool, and I'm grateful for the things it does do for me. So it's like catch twenty two, I guess. Yeah. It's good and it's bad. But yeah, I feel like I, it's up to us to you got to regulate yourself on that, on totally. like what you're going to use it for. And so would you attribute some of that, like putting that limit on on social media and to, and to some for of your yourself, mental health you for know? the mental health, though, mostly, yeah, you know? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, like, right, especially right now, everyone's in their own little world and you got to like let people be in their own little world right now because this is a for this pandemic thing, we're all, this is the first time in human history in a long time where we've all been going through the same exact thing at oh, once, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's, like, interesting to look, like, um, I remember, like, when it all first started, there was, like, a lot of comparisons to the Spanish flu and everything like that. I'm like, you can't really even compare it because the world was a different place there was than no that point. There no Instagram during oh, the Spanish yeah. they, flu. They didn't, have, they didn't have half the things we have now, you know? And, um... Yeah, like, could you imagine, like, the Spanish flu back then, and they had, like, like they had Instagram, or they had, like, all these other things. They didn't have the internet at all, you know? Like, what would they do, you they know? They so, like, didn't, barely had cars, I'm sure. You know? Yeah, 19, <laughs> I think it was 1920. That's also another weird comparison. It's, like it's, it's almost like My exactly uh, grandmother years, so. was, like, five in Whoa. 1920. Whoa. So, I re yeah, I remember, like... Does she have any memories of anything like She's, that? She passed away a long time ago. She oh, was like 93, okay. but uh. she uh, she would always, the like, this is my dad's mother. Um, she would always have canned food and money and stuff saved because, like, she would grew up during the Depression, so that she was always worried about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, and now it's kind of crazy because it seems like we're, you know, similar 
yeah. wage, you know, like I always wonder, I always wonder like if it would have tripped her out to be seeing everything going on now. Cause if it would have like brought back some like mm. feelings from her childhood and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. It, that is a very, you know, like, um, I didn't get to know my grandparents, but they all lived through that too. So it's like, and they lived here in New Mexico. And when that was, I like, what was it even like, you know, back in the 1920s, you know, New Mexico, um, as much as we like, New Mexico was barely a state. Yeah. You know, they, they were in an infancy of its state, you know, for real. Um, yeah. I think about that a lot. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, and now it's, it seems like uh, I was talking to Carlos about this a little bit about like um, about this like pride of New Mexico, you know, but in reality, like that's just comes from a place of like being from here in this like land and stuff. But like, what does it even mean like historically like pride in like a human on Earth, you know, right? Because like as much as we have like this localized pride here, you know, like what does that mean for like a history of humankind and shit like that? You know. In what in what sense are you meaning? Well, like you know, like this pandemic is it's not affecting you know, um, like even when we had these these viruses like Ebola and all this other shit, it was mostly affecting other people. You know? Oh yeah, this it is was like never such a global localized here. Yeah, yeah, it's like a localized event, but this is such a global event that we're all technically kind of kind of going through. But still, like you only really feel what's going on with like where you're at, you know. So like this is like the a lot of people's first time having to actually like be with themselves too. That's like, mm. that's why I started riding bikes during all this and all that. Cause yeah. being at home all the time was not going to work. For oh, me tell me about, health. tell me about that a little bit more. Um, like, so what, um, what, what's your routine with the bikes? Like, how did you even so, like get into that? Um, so on the 27th of this month, I'll be two years sober from booze. Okay. And, uh, so choose the light. Thanks, Max. Max, Damn. no no name for the audio. No one knows which Max this is. <laughs> a lot of Maxes. <laughs> and then they don't even sell the the back of you in in the in the video. <laughs> uh, so anyway, like uh, I, so, I, so last year, quit yeah. drinking and or the year before actually. Do you I have like a date? Twenty twenty. Uh, January twenty seventh, twenty nineteenth was the one of my aunts actually. Damn, you passed know the away, date then? Okay, you know the date. And I got the call and like a few days later, some other stuff went down with some friends of mine. So I th- like the whole reason I quit drinking was like, I think the universe once in a while will be like, you want to keep doing the same shit you're doing or do you want to do something else? And I was just kind of tired. Like there's just a lot of stuff that was going on in my personal life that I was kind of over, mm-hmm. you know, you keep making these same mistakes over and over again. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and uh, like the ultimate, like I always tell people the ultimate sobriety thing Cause people always ask me how tough it is. And like the toughest thing is to be, is to sit there and be like, look in the mirror and be like, Hey dog, um, everything good and bad in your life is yeah. because of you. You can't blame it on like, I can go back to my past. Like I had a pretty rough childhood, whatever, who hasn't, mm-hmm. but I can, you know, I've been in therapy for a very long time yeah. and like, they always like, I'm all, what I've learned from all that is like good or bad. Everything in my life, life is my responsibility. Mm. And so, I was just kind of, I, uh, so I had this one homeboy and he was like a a personal trainer and like, I was like, I need to do something other than, you know, going out and partying because I've, I, you know, when my, my dad died nine years ago and that was the last time I went sober and I was sober for about eight or nine months back then. But I remember I was working out, working out, working Mm -hmm. out. So my boy is a trainer and we'd go to the Hyatt down here and they had the gym there and we were working out and, you know, that got me through last year. You know, I had a pretty good network of friends, you know, kind of had to, there was just a lot of stuff, you know, you had to cut some people off and you had to kind of do new things and figure yeah. things out. So like the first year, last year was pretty crazy. Cause it's like, you have to create all these new habits and you got to sit with yourself a lot. And it's, and yeah. uh, like when you want, like, I want, like, I don't know how to explain it or I guess I do, but when you want to drink and like, I want to sit there and be in my sorrows and everything. I'm like, you can't, but there were still things I like to do. I still like to go dancing and I used to go oh, do yeah. karaoke, all that. So hmm. luckily like I had a pretty good support group. My homies would always like bring me oh. waters or like they'd bring me like some smoke or whatever. Like oh. they made sure I wasn't tr- like I was staying on my, on my focus, you know? And 
Where am I going with this? I mean, I remember, I remember seeing you like still at the bars all last year and everything. Yeah, and you're still my a my good time. my thing is, is I was I was like I would drink for social reasons and yeah. to like kind of and when I was having a rough time, it's easier to sit there and just pound a few beers out or whatever yeah. and, and talk about your problems. With exactly. I mean, I mean, one thing that I kind of noticed too about you last year was like when I would see you out in social situations, it didn't phase me at all. I'm like, oh, like. You know, oh, I, I, you, you don't like, cause some people when they, when they, when they go sober and th they have the hard time with the social aspect, you know, they can't, they don't know how to like have fun, you know, but you still seem like you're having like a great I had time to, still. You're having like the well, best for me, time still. It know? was, like I said, it was, I drank for a lot for, I have social anxiety, believe it or not. People don't like that mm. social is like, like I, it's like now not so much because being sober for a year helps, but I would always need that drink to take the little bit of edge off. Because yeah. I never had alcohol at the house. I would have mm. wine, but I, it would be far and few between when I drink that. Yeah. So I think that's important. Like, um, if I, if, 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 yeah. it, if I had a big house. problem with alcohol where I couldn't be around it, you would have never saw me at the bar last year. But, la but last year, the whole time I, like, if I'd go dance, I had to, I had to show myself that I could do all the stuff that I like doing without it. That's good. Man. And, you yeah. know, so. You know, that was last year and I built up, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, like the first year of sobriety, in my opinion, is like you're learning to say no to everything and, and mm. kind of just fit. You're like, you have to be like, no, I can't do that. Like, you have to really be that sit there and be like, nothing's going to change if I don't change mm -hmm. what I do. Mm -hmm. So the second time around, um, I'm like, I'm grateful that the pandemic didn't happen in 2019 because mm. I <laughs> would not have been wanting to detox yeah. during yeah. the pandemic because right now I can only imagine people who are trying to quit drink, like what they're going yeah. through because I, I like during normalcy or whatever it was before, you know, in the before, yeah. force. before, force. <laughs> and, uh, the before force, uh, the after, after, you know, so <laughs> this time around, like luckily, I had built up that going to the, I was always going to the gym and I was mm. trying to make myself healthy. So when this came through, you know, like, a lot, like every, you know, everything got weird. Like that first three months, we didn't know what was going on. I remember like, yeah. so, but right, right before flash forward, one like of my homies, later. yeah, yeah, a year yeah. later, one, uh, one of my homies, uh, had given me a bike frame and then my other friend owned the bike. You know, my buddy, uh, oh, so he built up fix your, and free and he, he built, built up me, he built up bike. my bike. Oh, nice. Well, it was a single speed. The first bike, it's my mountain bike. It's a single speed with yeah. a terrible seat. Well, I had a terrible seat. Now it's got a nice one. But, <laughs> like, so, uh, like, the, I was just sitting at the house. And, like, you know, I have so, I had some close friends. And, you know, everyone was in their own world. And, and some people weren't available to talk or to, like, you know, because we all, yeah. it, you know, and I'm one of those yeah. people, like, I, I had been around my friends so much. You know, I, like, so it was kind of crazy because you're kind of on your own, you know, and. So there were just time. I know, yeah. like like I was telling you earlier, um, I would be caught up in my head. Yeah. And so I was sitting there one day, and I looked at the bike, and I was like, and I had I have t uh, two homegirls that I was riding with for a while too. There, um, and so they were going out every once in a while. But I remember I just hopped on that thing one day, and I used to live uh, by U and M, so mm -hmm. I could just go over the bridge, and I'd hit the bosque. Yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. I remember, like, first off, I was going around the neighborhood, and I would do 10 miles. And 10 miles would take me, like, two and a half, almost three hours. Yeah. yeah. And, like, nowadays, 10 Easy. miles takes me, like, an hour or 45 yeah. minutes to an hour. Yeah. I can, yeah, I'm, yeah. like, you know. It's good. That's, that's the thing with, like, exercise <laughs> that's good, though, you know. Because, like, a lot of people think um, there's, like, there's positive and negative connotations with exercise because, um I mean, even in my own practice, you know, and everything, it's like, uh, like even like, I, I mean, the easiest analogy is like lifting weights, right? So you start off with a weight that you can like, feels really heavy, you know, or feels like, and then you realize like flash forward a couple of months, you're like, remember when I used to lift that? And it was a lot, you know, no, and nothing. people kind of dismiss that a little bit, you know, of that sense of accomplishment. And you can look back on something and like, it's a, it's a sense of growth, you know? And um, a lot of people don't like the in between, though, you know, the, no. the growing part. That's it's the, work. It's that, work. That's the part that like uh, most of us need, to, like for myself, I'm, I'm uh, actually learning to like, that's the part I need to enjoy hmm. instead of being like the end result. Oh, yeah. Because you know? well, people get attached to the aesthetics, right? 
but there's something about like like working out that you you actually literally growing stronger you're getting stronger like, you're getting better at something you know so i like, rode for so when we went so my bad i'm all interrupting you oh no um, so when we went this back, is your I, episode dog you know i, I know <laughs> I went, so i went when i went back to work in june yeah. like i or, yeah, yeah yeah where am i going with this um Back in June, that's like only a like a month after that's when like, everything hits, you know. Well, like everything. So hits. from remember from March 18th, there was so so from March, the last day I worked was March 18th, and then or whatever right. or 13th or Before whatever, May. and uh, so when we went back to work, like I had been riding and it was like zombie world. Mm. I we were going out and you wouldn't see nobody. And mm -hmm. I remember right in June when they started opening things up again. Mm -hmm. I went, I went, I was going through for like a night ride, and I passed by Alvado, and there were people outside, and I mm. fucking freaked out. I was like, <laughs> "What the hell?" And you know, mm. and mm. I forgot. What I'm, I don't know where I'm going Alvado. with this. Well, but. I mean, I think you're talking more, more or less about. Uh, oh yeah, we're, we're, how we're, people like have got gotten more into it, you know. But there's also that aspect of like um, when I used to skate skate a lot. Uh, we would call them uh, fair weather skaters, you know. Uh, so like when the weather is nice out, that's when you see everyone It'll come out. It's just like the same thing with the gym, right? You know, right after the New Year's resolutions, everyone's in the gym. You know, at the same for thing. two weeks. So like, I I don't go to the gym the no. first couple of weeks after. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm like, I don't I'm let those people because you know, like for reals, like yeah. fitness. Yeah. Like riding a bike, like uh, oh, I'll tell you what, every Yo, day no riding that bike. Build, gives Need you the water? craziest discipline mm -hmm. and like I want some more of my poison juice, <laughs> poison juice. Water uh, for me please yeah I know I, I mean like I'm talking about that like even speaking about sobriety like I feel oh I guess um, we, I was still telling the story yeah, yeah yeah okay so there was just one point where I exhausted all my options and I was just sitting at the house by myself hmm. and I was like Go on that bike and get out of here. So I was riding around UNM, the UNM area, doing my 10 mile rides, and we started doing that. And oh, June. Okay, this is why I went to June. So when we, so when June came, like how you were talking about how, you know, we see the results a long time later. So yeah. during the during all that, I was riding my bike to just keep myself sane, like to just stay out of my head. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about riding a bike is like. Like I was th like, I've, I've been having to walk cause both of my bikes are down right now. And, mm. and like, so when you, when you ride out eight miles, you gotta, you know, and you're like, my, my car's here mm -hmm. and I'm here. So mm. if you ride out eight miles, you know, you have to ride the other eight miles back. And it's mm. like, you have to, you have to accept it whether you like it or not. Mm. Some days mm -hmm. I was not like, there were days I was out there. Did you ever have to walk, walk your bike it. back or no? Yeah, uh, really. Oh, yeah, a few times, like, I yeah. get these flats, and it's like, but I, and it's funny because I laugh at it now. Before, I would get so pissed, and now I'm just like, luckily, like, oh, this, but, like, back in June, I remember I was at the coffee shop with one of my friends, and she was like, dude, you're skinny. And one of my boys had taken a picture of me, and I was like, and I was like, I, so and, saw that I was, after, I was, yeah. I was, I was like happy, but I was like, that was not even my goal to like, mm. it was just, I was just riding to stay sane. Yeah. And you know, the, 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 <clears throat> that, and then, so I was having to sell art to get by during mm -hmm. all this. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing that kept me sane and thanks to my year of sobriety before, because I had to build these routines, like we were talking about, mm -hmm. um, I was like, cool. So I was like, you can either ride in the early morning and then you come home and paint or mm. you paint and then you go ride. So I had this cool little routine. So, and during that time, you know, like you, like a lot of, I think a lot of people are having a hard time with having to be by themselves now. And I honestly yeah. had, I honestly this year, like last year I was gonna, like I had personally wrote into this book that I was going to kind of like, pull back a little and not go out as much and stuff and give myself a before lot. everything you before mean, everything okay. before even the pandemic yeah. happened like this that was my actual plan was to cut back a little mm -hmm. and give myself more time to myself because i don't like being a lot of us don't like being by ourselves because a lot of like it's, it's tough to get to that point you know yeah and it, but it, now it, it's like but, uh, but i was gonna force myself yeah. to because i knew i know like i'm one of those people that's why i said when you, when you can be real with yourself and there's still things I'm, yeah. I'm figuring out about myself. I'm not, I am nowhere near perfect, but 
But that's acceptance, though. Yeah, right? that's and, acceptance, and that's yeah. what a, like like people talk about being woke and all that, and all that stuff is is like being aware of yourself. Like you're like, oh yeah, bro. I know? mean, you're just dude, like I, I always I always say I'm like yo. Don't don't ever call me woke. I hate that term. I don't like, I don't that, like that term. Either. I don't like it because I'm it, like it, I'm aware. I'm mostly just because of the the branding of it, but also just like. I'm like, whoa, like, it's weird that you would go around professing that, like, I'm woke, I'm awake. I'm like, you're well, that's like, what no, you're, you're saying. Not. You're like, well, you have to tell people that's the biggest lie you can never <laughs> tell yourself. You should always be in a constant state of awakening, you know, because when you uh, well, I like the yeah. word aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, those I'm go together. Of, I'm aware of my bad habits. I'm aware, you know, I know yeah. what makes me tick. I know, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. Like that, I can actually see some parallels, like with your your practice and like the way I looked at things too, uh, uh, like a year year ago almost. You know, um, like I always told myself, like, okay, you're gonna get up and you're gonna go run, and then after you run, it's like that's that's when you're actually waking up. And, and it's the pink rest city. Of, yeah, the red. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> the rest of your day is open, and like you can put it into something positive or you can put it into something negative. But like going back to this, like people don't like to sit with themselves and be with themselves it's hard people are always trying to find distractions for themselves to like get away from that lonely feeling you know and a lot and of the people funny thing is, is yeah. if you really sit back and look at it you can for the rest of your life you could be with people that are right in there next to you like a foot apart or whatever when well, we could do that again mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're still if you're still alone inside of yourself if you still feel that oh, way yeah. then you're gonna like it doesn't matter you can have yeah. millions of people around you but yeah. And that's what I made it like last year. I'm like, you know what, dude? I found myself in those going on those bike rides, dude. Like, I was going to. I've I've still been going to therapy through all this, you know. Mm -hmm. And but some those those like two and a half, three hour bike rides are a little bit more therapeutic sometimes because mm -hmm. you know it's yeah, you have to push I, through some yeah. stuff and whatever's on your mind. You're like, there's sometimes where like I like to listen to music while I ride or I mm -hmm. walk and. Do you listen to music or no? Yeah, I listen to instrumental stuff okay. a lot. I yeah. like I can't if I'm trying to figure out stuff, I can't have somebody's words like mm. in my head, you know. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah cuz instrumental music is is pretty I like instrumental music a lot. I do too, cause, man. Yeah. Cuz it's like like a lot of times people are telling you their opinion in a song, you know. And sometimes <laughs> there's some kind of something yet to follow, you know. I, I feel yeah. that. Yeah. And like and, but I think being out on the, like, I, till the day I die now, an old fucking man, hopefully, I will probably be going to the, you know, the bosque more. Like, like when all oh, this man. is over or whatever, like when we're back to whatever, I. You want to keep and hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to that. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll go out and stuff because I do want to go dancing and be around people and stuff again. But, like, there's a part of me that I'm like, that some of that old life's gone already. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't need to, I'm not going to need to be out. So you, you have faith like in the future that we're going to go back to some kind of, normal. we're going to go. Not, to, I don't, uh, I don't, like I don't, call, I don't call it normal. Cause I don't right, like call right, it normal right now is either. normal. <laughs> like yeah. right now is where we're at. Like, yeah. Like, like that's that, I think that's what gets me through this too. And like one thing that helped me get through this is I treated it like a grieving. Like, like when I lost my dad, mm -hmm. they teach you about these stages of grief. Oh, yeah. like, so when the pandemic happened, a few of my friends would hit me up and they're kind of freaked out. And I'd be like, look up the stages of grief. I was like, I and, and just, and like, don't even put it towards like a person be like, mm -hmm. this is like the death of, of a self you've known. Like all of us, like we're in a oh, way yeah. different world now, you know? Yeah. yeah a lot like, of people had to give up on an I identity of themselves a lot, you know, you know, it's me, myself too. There's things that you're yeah. like, damn, like, like it's, like I've been working during, like I I've been tattooing now since June. You know we had that one time back in November where we took some time off again. But it, it's yeah. like it's kind of weird to me because like I have a little. It seems a little bit of normalcy to me. But then when you get off of work at like ten or eleven on a Saturday night, there's like nothing to go do. You're like, all right, I gotta go. Yeah, home. some people I feel are still uh, um, <laughs> dealing with the weekends. You know, because some a lot of people still have like nine to five jobs, so they, I work they on want. The weekends. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you work. On it. That's what probably helps a bit. You I'm know? like, yeah. I was like, woo! I like, I'm, I, I was like, I never <laughs> have the weekends off. But people that have like nine to five jobs, I think that's kind of tough for them because they have the weekends and they're like, well, like, because you need that release, you know. And then a lot of poor, a bunch of poor, like a bunch of people, they don't have, they've just been, they have all these responsibilities now that they don't get no. their break from because, you, you no. know, a lot of people can't be away think, from their kids yeah. and stuff now. And, you know, I think that kind of segues into uh, like my, my next question I really want to talk to you about, um, wh where are we at? Like, you know what time length we're at right now, Max? 32 minutes. 
Okay. Like, it's just perfect, perfect. Are we going to do um, an hour or something? I will just, we'll just do it however long, oh, okay. you know? We know. Um, but uh, it kind of segues into my, like, I want to start talking about your art and your art practices and stuff. Okay. So, like, but, um, like, most people do have that, that nine to five mentality and, you know, the, the, they finally get to have time to themselves, kind of feels like. Because, you know, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I've worked nine to five jobs and I've done that, A like, lot. Monday through Friday, you know, fucking grind. And, um, there is something about that when you're in that, that the weekends really do feel like your own time. And it kind of feels weird to like, well, this is my time to live. You know, and you get two days or maybe if you, if you, if, have, if you have a Friday too, you have like a night, a two and, and a half day. Yeah. You know, and that's your time to live in this life. And so you kind of lose sight of like what this life is, but as artists, I mean, that's probably what's kept me as an artist is, is that. Like, I want to live life. I don't want to give my time away to something else, you know, because a nine to five job, people like think about like, all right, you, you work a job and you get money back and that's something you have to do. Like, I always look at it like you work a job and I'm giving my time to something that I'm not really invested that, in. That you know? you're not, that's not yours for you. Yeah, exactly. Like, but then the trade off is you become an artist and you have to deal with all the other struggles that go with being an artist, you know. A lot and, of uncertainty. Uh, oh, yeah. You know? But I always think I've always uh, had a, a really high regard and respect for um, tattoo artists. And uh, I'm not saying that's, that's all you are, but, like, yeah, ta- but tattoo artists is. kind of figured it out a little bit, you know, of a way to, like, fit within this model and this system that kind of benefits them more or less than, like, you know, someone that's just, like, you know, painting, like, stuff for free all the time. So um, I guess my question would be, like, in your art practice, um, what, have you seen any um, bleed over between the way you're taking care of yourself mentally and taking yourself, taking care of yourself physically into your art, you know? So, like, the whole thing I was talking about earlier about having to be responsible for stuff. So, yeah. like, a lot of times I would be – I was all about my party life and stuff and – that would affect work, you know, like, cause I'd want to be done to work at like certain times on the way, you know, and, like, I'll tell you the one thing alcohol makes me lazy as fuck. Oh yeah. It doesn't make me want to do anything. And, you know, and like, I, I, I have a good career, but you know, my, I want my tattoo career to be. So now with my sobriety, like, I don't know if you've noticed lately, I've been doing more flash, you know, I've been in, like, mm, my, you know, yeah. I've, I've been encouraged to be, do more flash and stuff. So your and production like, has and, gone up. Well, like, yeah. my thing is, is Output. like my, I was like my art and like my painting and my tattooing were always kind of separate from each other in a sense. But, so, but now I can kind of see it where I'm like, no, I want, like, if I want to do my paint, I want to do my paintings as tattoos too. So, mm. you know, and I, that's what I see now. I like. I was like selling myself short all those years I was partying because I could have been spending more time and you know I still need to spend more mm. time with my career you know and now we have all this free time and mm-hmm. and there was three months that I couldn't even tattoo and it sucked mm-hmm. but you know so in that would you say that like your productive hours are at nighttime when you would otherwise have been um, partying you know so, no? it, it, so how's that, cha- how's that uh, change no around, it's you know? just I would be out super late and then I'd be at work that, you know you just get a little sluggish the next day okay. at work and you know, you're not at your full, like now, like I don't, like I don't smoke at work or nothing. Like if when I work, I'm sober till I get off. Like I don't, really? I don't smoke. Okay. Yeah, because I don't, I don't own no, like I want people to have me. I need my mind right be, oh. to be able to focus. So you've, you've been tattooing sober this For whole me? year. Yeah. Damn, dude. That's, yeah, that's, that's, I I, that's a pretty cool smoke. take, dog. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Cause like, I know, I feel like a lot of tattooers almost kind of lean on like, um, oh, I do, but you know? there's just it just makes me. I just I just it's one of those things now where I'm like I would rather just not have You'd any other influences you know? with myself. Yeah, and like you know it's like I I used to wear headphones and stuff to focus, and now mm. it's like I now I don't have to because I'm not hungover, none of that stuff, and you know. How is like the 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 interaction with the client been? Like, so less, that you know? like. The one, the one thing about this year that's really cool is, uh, there's been a lot of, there's been, so there's people that they've been in the house forever mm-hmm. yeah. and like, so some of them will venture out to get a tattoo and it's cool because now it's not like it was before. Cause like we're doing this thing where you can, it's only you and the client. Like you're, we don't, 
you can't have a lot of people there because oh yeah for for obvious can't have your friend yeah you can't have your whole and you know and before because you know and it's nice because now the the, you know there's right away there's something to talk about because everybody wants to talk about it some people Mm. don't you know some people Mm. but some people are like they've been inside the house by themselves or with their families forever so they just it's like I'm trying to become a better listener, so it's been nice because you can mm. just ask them. So what's been going on, and they'll tell you, and, and you know, and yeah. it, it helps me to become a better listener because I'm a talker, you know. <laughs> but yeah, man. you don't, mm. y- you won't learn anything if you talk all the time. Like that's some real shit. That's true, man. Yeah. And you know, and I still have issues with it. I still, yeah. I love to talk, but I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna learn anything. Mm. But that it's been so nice. Be, like I saw, I saw one of my friends I haven't seen in over like a year or two, and it's like a trip. Because yeah. so much has gone on and you're like, and it's cool too, because people, it's cool to see people still live in their lives. Like a lot of people think everything's on hold and it's like, this is just our, the level, the level that we're on right now of, yeah. of this life game we play, you know, well, yeah, this is the wild card that got dealt to us, you know, <laughs> like, um, and maybe it's not a wild card. Maybe it's not, you know, we'll, we'll see. And but like, I, I, uh, I see your sentiment with, um, I've always thought about that with tattoo artists. Cause it's like, it's, it's, um. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this in a way to like degrade it or anything, but like, it's almost like in the same sense of like, you get a, you go to a barber shop, you know, and there's that aspect of like, someone's working on your body, mm-hmm. you know, like someone is like, when you, when, when, when I got my tattoo from you earlier this year, you know, we talked a lot about, about a lot, you know, I, we talked about like what books we were reading, you know, and then I was, I was on my, uh, my summer, I was on my Leo shit, I bet. I was on my Leo, yeah, sh- I was on my Leo shit of like, uh, I, was, I was really like, King yeah, status, you know. Or August. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. I was on my, I was on my Leo shit right there, but um, there is that that thing that like um, I've always wanted to talk to about tattoo artists because I I've, I've always thought about it every time I've been tattooed, um, that like client um, artist relationship, you know, and I've always found that very attractive and very uh, interesting as an artist because you're an artist, but like. Um, like when I make when I make art, there's a disconnect with the people that buy it. Like I only talk to them when they purchase it or when they're thinking about purchasing it. I don't talk to them when it's actively in their house all the time. All the you know? time, yeah. You don't so, get like re, you don't get a, yeah, you know. You so don't like, get a, a update. Yeah, like but like as tattoo <laughs> artists, you're like you're going through a whole process of some seeing something that they're interested in and then putting it onto to their body forever, you know. It's really cool when it's your stuff that you personally drew. Yeah. Because it's like, dang, my they want my art personally, you know, hmm. which hmm. is cool. I think that's the dream for any artist or like that tattoos, you know, yeah. if you want to do your stuff, you know. Yeah. And it's cool. But like, like I did this super sweet elephant the other day and I was all stoked on it, you know. <laughs> but it was it has, their idea. And it's yeah. not even close to my style. <laughs> yeah. but I was, And it was cool because it was a memorial piece for like mm. a friend of mine that had mm. passed, you know, on another friend of mine. And it was like. And that's what you're talking about—that connection mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, like I didn't even like I didn't even know he had passed away, and it, like it bummed mm-hmm. me out. But mm-hmm. it was like I was happy that I was able. I was happy I was able to tattoo my friend, and that she was able to get that, and that we both knew him and had that connection with wow, him. So yeah. it means, you know what I mean? That's a very valuable and like important <clears throat> service within humanity, you know. And I think that's what's awesome about tattoo yeah, culture and tattoo cool artists. Stories you know? yeah. for sure, and you meet you meet cool people. There's people. There's people like I remember one time I was waiting in line at a club and this guy was like, "Bueno, does it wait in line?" And dude like slipped the door guy some money and we got in. Like I was like, "Damn!" I was like, "Bro, I was just, I'm happy waiting." He's like, he's like, "How oh, no, you take care of me, you know." And you know, yeah, that cloud. And there's like people that just become your homies too, man. They're yeah. like, you know, you'll run into them at, a, at out and about, and you're mm. like have lifelong friendships. There's dudes, mm. there's dudes I. Haven't tattooed in years, but I still talk to them. You know, they're not even like in the city anymore uh-huh. and stuff. But you're just like they became friends. You know. Do you ever feel like um, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit? <laughs> oh no. Uh, do you ever feel like because I've, I've been actually asking a lot of people this question, but this is the first time it'll be recorded. Um, do you, what's the deal with uh, Albuquerque clout? You know, local clout. In you know, because because I would say like Bueno, honestly, like. I mean, at one point we had talked about making a a, a reality TV show. You know, remember <laughs> we're this shit? Gonna, yeah, be, you, be we, an eligible bachelor. Yeah, like we were, <laughs> we were gonna make most eligible bachelor of like you know, 
But like, you obviously have some clout here within the Albuquerque scene, you know. Like people like they know you. If they don't know you by like name, people they know you by by me. sight. You know, they're yeah. like, I know who you are, and I'm like, it trips me out because yeah. I I don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be a local celebrity. But what about it? I don't it? mind it. No I don't mind it, but like, I don't know. There's just that little part of me where I'm like, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I mean, but like, it just depends what the clout's about too. Like. What am I known for? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which is cool. But I that's, just hope, I don't know. But there's, there's people like, there's people in Albuquerque that chase that clout, you know, and they want to get, they, they really get a kick out of it. And I always like, hmm, what, what about this? Is like, so like, there's that, there's that, that humbleness, you know, that like someone who's been doing the work, you know, but doing this like self discovery and all this shit, you know, that you're going to get. But like, what about, I like it when people, what would you tell, what would you tell like, I think a lot of that probably comes with your maturity, but like honestly, if you had this clout when you were like 18 years old, what would you tell 18 year old you about like, yo, chase the clout, don't chase the clout, what is this? You know? The only the thing about stuff like that is I always think about stuff like that because like in two days, my dad will be gone nine years and people always tell me like, that sucks. And I'm like, for, for him leaving and stuff, yeah, that sucks. But like for him, when he left, there was a lot of stuff about myself I had to address and like I had to become a different kind of man without my father, mm. you know, and mm. um, what was the, okay, where am I going off the, what was the question again? Because I was it's, going it's off. It's like the, you're, like what would you tell oh, him? Oh, okay, okay, okay. A okay, younger version of yourself. Yeah. I, I don't like, I don't know, man. I would just tell my younger self like you're going to be all right because honestly, uh, I wouldn't be who I am now if I didn't go through the shit I went through. So it's important that you, you know, went yeah. through the shit you went through. Like yeah. uh, the cool, like the thing that I like the most about my clout or whatever you want to call it. A lot of people tell me now that like riding the bike and stuff that I've inspired them to like mm. go do things. And that's, yeah. that's what I want, man. Like yeah. I want people I, at the end of the day, I want people to be like, you know, like I, I try to always help people out, you know, I'll, that's why I'll talk with so many people mm -hmm. because sometimes like one little thing can change one person's life. That's important, man. You know I'm, I mean? I'm glad you brought that up, man. Cause like, <clears throat> I remember talking to you about that down at Zendo at the coffee shop. You're like, Yo, yeah, I want to be known. I mean, you were, I think there's, you know, there's this thing that I think I've noticed happens within New Mexico is we kind of do just, um, we uh we don't actually pat ourselves on the back when like when we actually are doing something good you know and I'm glad you took pride in that that like when people um um at, like they reach out to you and they're like yo you've inspired me to like focus on my health you know and like that's you should be proud of that you know that you, I I commend you for that for sure um but it's nice to hear that because for me I yeah I'm doing it like I said just to keep myself sane but it's cool that. Like, it's cool that, like, because of my status or whatever you want to call it, that people can see me doing, like, some good stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that makes them want to change their life. Because that's, that's, I think, that's, like, I honestly mm. think if a lot, a lot of us, we should all just be building each other up instead exactly. of anything else, you know. Because yeah. everybody, everybody's got time. We got time for, you know, people want to chase this cloud or whatever. And yeah. it's like, we can all have it, dude. I look at, I look at people, I mean, I'm 28. That's like two years. Ooh, from, uh, two years. 28. From, I know, right? Two years from 30. I'm out. <laughs> I'm like on the, like, I'm still like almost like in I'm the middle. I'm a month away from 40. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm like in the middle of uh, Mercury and Retro, uh, yeah, uh, Saturn return. I'm in the middle of Saturn return. And, um, but I look at like uh, kids and I consider them kids because I'm like, damn, I'm like, you know, like, they're just younger than me, like around, they're like 21, you know, 22. And I'm like, and, I have a lot of like admiration for him. like, man, you are so much more mature than I was at 21. And, but other times I'm like, you're going to go through a lot of life that I know personally. I'm like, you're going to go through this. You're going to do this. It's like everyone just goes through, you know, but I think like what kind of like speaking on what you're saying is that like, it's nice to have people around you who have gone through stuff and be like, Hey, you know, you, you're going to go through this, but also here's like a better way to go through it. You know, yeah, because that's like, I don't know, the number one thing in therapy that my lady tells me is like the only way you can really heal people is to heal your or heal yourself is to yeah. help other people heal. Yeah. And, you know, like there might be somebody struggling with something. And I think about that because I like I have to learn things the hard way a lot. A lot of my growth has been because it's like I have to like there's no way out of it. Like it's, I don't want to go insane in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's like I have to make these changes. Yeah. And that's what how. 
And I used to hate that. And now I see it coming and I'm like, all right, I'll just do it because I, it's, I've been conditioned with myself that I know that the change has to happen, but there's people, there's people going through stuff and they don't like, they can, you can hear one little thing from somebody that can, like there, there's been times in my life. And that's like this other thing I was going to talk about. Um, you know, where one person will tell you something and mm. you'll be the lowest of the low and someone mm. will tell you something and motivate you. And mm. like, and a big thing with me last year with the bike rides and stuff is like, I learned that your inner voice needs to be like that with yourself. Mm. You know, like, yeah, I, we, I think us as humans, we were, I, I know I, myself personally, I still, every morning I still deal with this voice, but you know, you have that voice that tells you you're not good enough and this and this mm. and that. And yeah. You know, and I have this other inner voice now that's like, no, you are, you mm -hmm. are doing good. You know, like people like, like there would be times where I'd be discouraged on posting videos of bike rides and stuff because mm -hmm. people, some people would tell me, you know, you post too many videos of bike rides and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, but then you get like 10 people that are like, dude, my, so my cousin is follows you and start has started riding bikes and mm. you know like i have a lot of friends that are like taking care of themselves now and i'm proud yeah. you know and it's good and so would you i say don't want to say i have anything to do with it but if some people are motivated by me that's dope you yeah know? if you help one person that's good yeah. well would you say that like that um i mean as artists we always have that like self-doubt voice in us you know and um i think everyone i mean everyone, I everyone in, in the world it. has that self-doubt voice but like with being an artist and especially being an artist that's presenting stuff to publicly, you know, um, you do have that even more amplified. And so, um, like when you add that other voice of like saying like, no, I am fucking awesome. And I am these or things. Or you're doing you know? good. Not even, yeah, like, you know, yeah, like people like, like that gratitude, you know, and, and I, for me, I mean, personally, um, I have that, uh, like that little voice that tells me <laughs> I'm the fucking best. You know, sometimes that gets amplified even more than the other one who's like, no, That's you're a piece of shit, you know, like, and those kind of, those two kind of battle out a little bit, but, um, you really just do want to get to that point of, uh, you want to be a human being and balanced and stuff. But, um, I think almost like in, in my journey, that voice that tells me, and I kind of spoke about this when I was getting that, um, getting my tattoo from you, um, this idea of like, you know what? I am fucking awesome. You know, I am a fucking king. I am. You know, I'm good at what I do. And I think it's you better know. almost to nurture that voice than to nurture the one of that self-doubt, you know? Well, the self-doubt one's been holding you down for so long. Yeah, like, that's like a lot of people don't get past that. that like, you know? that thing's probably this big in the reality of the big, yeah. you know, it sounds like this big giant voice and it's not. And usually it's unhealed shit from your past, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, but... The only thing is that one night where you praise yourself, that's where you got to find the yeah. line with that one too, because you can't get true, all true, up, you know? true. But, because I mean, because well, like giving yourself yeah. credit when you don't, because you do have to give yourself credit, because mm. like uh, you do have to be your own cheering section, because sometimes there's not going to be people there that can cheer you on, or they're not going to be able available, and yeah, like. And turning that on when it's like needed most, you know, sometimes it's that's like what like thing. every every day in this world now, dude, I wake up every morning and I'm like, you know what? It's this. If anything, COVID-19 has taught me is how to live in the moment. Like right yeah. now, we're just doing this, man. After this, I'll probably go home and yeah. draw a little yeah, workout, yeah, you know, yeah, and, you know, I'm not even worried about tomorrow. I have some plans and, you know, they're going to go through, but I don't know what's, you know, I'm not trying to live, you know two years from now and maybe we're dancing at a club and it's like just i just don't <laughs> yeah wanna, i just want to be realistic like what is life right giving now. you right now exactly you know, you know? and i'm very yeah. blessed right now dude my my art's grown you know like the, yeah. my tattoos are starting i'm starting to do a lot more of my flash and stuff yeah. you know and you know that's good man i've been hearing actually i've been hearing well it's it's like uh there's there's definitely some middle ground, but most of the artists I've been talking with and hearing from, it's either like it's one or the other. Like they're either you're either thriving and you're doing really really well, or you haven't figured it out and you're kind of stuck. You're figured. And yeah. I, and yeah, and I kind of feel bad for the people that are stuck um, because it's almost like well that means you're not it's not it has nothing to do with your art. It has to do with your personal self and like what are you what are you still harboring inside yourself that's keeping you back from creating in this time where we have so much time to create you know because that is, is a crutch you were talking about that earlier you know how like um what you choose to do with your time you know time so is 
fucking like the one thing I learned out of all this shit too is my mm. time is very very valuable and oh I will yeah not waste it anymore. oh yeah a lot of people are really my that. time yeah. man yeah and like like I did three thousand miles on my bike last year and like yeah. and I I may never get to do that again because like I, no. I feel like I feel like. 2021 gonna you're gonna do like 4,000 miles bro <laughs> yeah probably more but i'm just saying like <laughs> like go. this year it seems like they're gonna try to get the world back to a little bit spinning again you know and uh, like you know who knows i mean man the world did the world ever stop spinning you know <laughs> you know but well for the weight for what people yeah. are gonna need to feel comfortable i yeah. should say you know yeah well, me i'm cool riding bikes and tatting thing. and yeah. working out man yeah you know Sure. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about like your current, um, what you're exploring within your art and stuff? You know, I feel like when I like, and I, when I see some of your princesses, I'm like, man, that's like a, a perfect combination of like all the women I love, you know, <laughs> jeez, bro. It's yeah, like, I love women. <laughs> I like to paint them. Yeah. I like, I like to them. paint them. Yeah. So like, what about that? Like you, what about the female form? Is it what really draws you in? I'm like, I mean, obviously I always have liked painting those. Just, I think just, yeah, I just always liked women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I don't even know, through yeah. good and bad times, you know, yeah. like everything's experience and all that. I there's like a beauty to women. Mm. I think I paint them as devils because they're also a little devilish to me, <laughs> in my in my mind, you know. It's the best but, one, man. Yeah. You know, I just like I yeah like. Last year was a good year for those. I was like, yeah. You know, I like I don't know I just like painting girls so you can always put them in fun situations. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get one, <laughs> get one for the spot, man. Um, 2021, real quick, and then I think I mean I, I I love talking to you, bro. I love to have you on again. Um, but 2021, what is your like? Um, just like one sentence. What are your plans today? You know, I'm what gonna, are you doing? I've been focusing a lot on work now. I got me some new some new uh, supplies. So. Mm-hmm. You got that rotary, yeah? I got a rotary machine, mm-hmm. yeah, and some, you know, just trying some new stuff, trying to focus more on that, because I've been doing, I've been tattooing for, like, almost 12 years, and mm-hmm. days is, like, 12 years, and, um, my art, I have a art show coming up in two months. Mm-hmm. Where um, at? Uh, the B Rupee, we're still talking about it. Okay. So, yeah. yeah okay. You're going to be in there pretty soon, aren't you? Or you were already in there, right? Uh, so I was not in there last year. Last, um, yeah, I've been talking was, to Gabe about stuff. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, he told me he's, uh, he'd like me to do some stuff in March. So, oh, man. So, that's a little bit more stress because I'm, like, trying to get a bunch of work art yeah. done. But then at the same time, now I got to – but, you know, I always mix – like, I'm just going to mm. let the two mix now. Yeah, because they they are who I, who I am, you know. Do you do you get stressed when you have like shows? You know, um, I have been having shows for a long time. I used yeah. to get pretty stressed out, but you know what's crazy? Now that I don't drink, yeah, they do not stress. Like I I've usually done about three or four days before because okay, before that I always be partying and Dude. I'd be sitting at like I'd be sitting at geckos or somewhere with my painting like drinking and I'd mm. like. Mm. It was weird. I would always get sick after art shows because I'd be stressing. Like, I'd be like, yeah, and I'd be procrastinating. Yeah. Like, now, like, now I know that they got to be there by April, the first, yeah. the art opening. So I'm like, cool. Like, I always like talking to artists about that stuff. Like, cause, um, I know every time I have a show and I've gotten a lot better at it, but like, even like my show at Nopal, like, uh, that was like the only show I ever ha- I had in 2020. Um, yeah, that was the only one I had yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah! Shout out Nopal, shout out uh, Mateo and Josh over there, but um, Nopal Gallery. Um, I think that they're they're really exciting. I like what they're doing there. You know, I like that they're yeah. They got uh, good energy going. Yeah, you know, I went to high school, Mateo. Man, I'm happy to see people that I've known for a long time doing good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dude. That's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. Like for the most part, most of the artists in town and stuff that I know, like they're doing good during this. Yeah, I think like. Cause it's like, like I always tell everybody, when are we gonna get this time again? Not really, man. And yeah. you know, and but but also, if you don't, if you're not doing anything, I'm not judging you either because we're all, everyone is where they're at. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, it's hard. Like it sucks that it's a tough. lot of people aren't creating right now, but sometimes people gotta be with themselves. Yeah. Well, it's a disruption. It's a disruption of what, because um, a lot of people. Um, I would almost put it like this: is like I actually learned. I learned routine in this this time, and I learned ritual and a lot of that. Um, before that, I was very adverse to routine and ritual, and it's um, important though. And I, it took it took this almost to like me to delve into that and pay attention to like rhythms of stuff and everything, 
and finally got into my own zone with it. But um, but I think at the same time, uh, this like disrupted people's natural routines and rhythms, and that's why maybe they're not creating as much, you know, because they they needed that like constant my, something uh, else. It know? was a it's a I don't know if a lot of few people I listen to have called it an awakening. Yeah. You know, 2020 yeah. vision, like if you want to use that <laughs> word, it's like it's yeah. opening your eyes to yeah. some stuff. Yeah. You know, but at the, yeah, like if anything, I hope most people learn to like just be OK with being with themselves and yeah. realizing that, you know, fucking life is crazy. Life is like mm. unsure so, sometimes. So, I mean, and we're running, we're not like I'm not running over this podcast goes for how long it wants. But um. Uh, one question I do want to ask you is like uh, I do ask people this like um, because I want to know it for myself too because it's easy to practice ritual and it's easy to practice your therapy and practice your your uh, the stuff that's keeping you going but what what do you do when like um, something just too much like something does trigger you too much and sets you into a way where like what is what is your That's, like um, what yeah, do you combat that with it's you know? funny how you say that um because i feel like right now everyone's kind of at an exhaustion level with all this pandemic stuff yeah and i've had a few people come up my friends come up and tell me you know like they're like and i am actually in the same spot right now i i'm feeling depression and all that stuff and everything mm-hmm. right now but like because of this last year there's like if there's a day there's if there's a day where I just need to lay in bed and just be in bed then I just don't I don't get be hard on myself about it anymore. You just go you know? and do it. Yeah. yeah. Like a few days ago there was like I had been trying to like paint and draw and like mm-hmm. I needed to do some stuff for work and it wasn't going and this and that and I'm just like you know what dude uh you have I have a video game on my phone that and I played that for like four or five hours mm. and you know it's my probably not the greatest use yeah. of time or whatever but. I knew where I was going to be. So, and, yeah. and, and, but also when I'm having those days, like there's that, cause yeah. I allow myself to have those days where I don't really do anything, but also a, a long time, like it was probably back in, cause I, you know, seasonal depression, we know yeah, when the time yeah, it comes. Yeah. So like, and I know I'm like, okay, this year has been crazy. So like, actually I was kind of proud of myself this year because I always do an end of the year review at the end of the year on New mm-hmm, Year's Eve mm-hmm, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's always bad shit. And this year I was like, Hey, why don't you tell yourself about all your accomplishments? You Damn, know? Dude. And it was way better. That's some dope growth right there. Yeah. And it's like, and it, cause those things would pop up and I'd be like, yeah, but you did this and yeah, but you did yeah. that. And yeah. And, and you know, it's like that boy, that bad voice. I'm like, cool dog. Yeah. All that stuff happened. And I didn't accomplish this yeah. or whatever. And it's stuff that we've all, you know, but it's mm. like, yeah, but I did this and I like, do you, three, like I like I didn't like 3000 miles. I know is a lot, but I didn't really realize the imp- like it is a lot, you know, like is, my man. leg, like my whole body. Is Think how many other body. people didn't ride their bike. <laughs> yeah. 3, miles, you know, a year, you know, there's so many. And, there's, uh, there's more people that didn't do it than there are people that did do it. You know, but I but so a few months back, I drew a lot of I did a lot of art. I drew a lot of paintings on watercolor paper. So mm-hmm. when I'm having those days, I'm like, cool, you want to be stuck in your head? You can sit here and work on this painting because you yeah. don't have to think on it. You don't have yeah. to think about what you're going to do with this. It's already there laid out. And I have them in a box because there's there are ones where I'm like, they have no significance. They're just there if I need something to do because because I, I because I can, you know, sometimes you're just going to sit there and stuff's going to hit you and. Mm-hmm. You can just sit with it sometimes because you know mm-hmm. I'm still there. I'm there with everybody too. I have my days like this stuff is little. This stuff is frustrating sometimes, you know. But oh, definitely, yeah, man. I, I mean, like going back to your like, um, you, you take the time, you know, uh, uh, like a lot of uh, aesthetic babes and like the you know the aesthetic uh, girl therapists online would tell you that I was called self care, you know. <laughs> you know, taking the taking the time out for yourself for some self care, but um, I would like almost want to speak to the fact that like especially growing up in New Mexico, growing up in Albuquerque specifically, there is a lot of um, things that are trapped in our own like uh, culture of like you know I mean even it's I mean for me it's like I I was very privileged that I got to grow up in in a sense that nurtured a lot of things, but also like I grew up in New Mexico and I grew up in Albuquerque too and. And the culture here kind of does um, nurture this idea of masculinity is like, oh, you don't talk about your feelings or, oh, you don't, you know, you just got to man up and you got to like just go through things. But it's very, 
uh, beautiful to see like people that I look up to as like very high like masculine figures um, taking the time to take care of themselves and be like, yo, you're gonna be stronger if you learn how to take care of yourself. And it's not it's not a, a weakness to show um, that you're not strong all the time. You know, it's actually better. It makes you more human. Yeah, it makes you more real. You know, it makes you a better part of the community and society as a whole. Because we're, so, the, yeah. I don't know, a lot of, you just, I, but yeah. you gotta be able to control your emotions too. Oh yeah, you know? at the same time. That's yeah. the, that's the thing. Like I, when I'm having a bad day and like now lately because of all this, I just, a lot of times I'll go to the bosque now and mm -hmm. I won't talk to anybody though. Like what, if I'm in a mood now, I try not to, I, I'm cool with being by myself now. Mm. But I do have those days, but then I do have those days where I'm having those days and I need to reach out to people too. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. that's all it is, man. Like we live in this crazy society. Like I, I feel like you can't be overwhelmed by your emotions, but you also can't act like they're not there. And you can't let them. And I, like you, I've been know? doing good during this. I'm not gonna lie, but there's been some days where I'm like, nope. That's oh, yeah. Not, and oh, yeah. I'm not going to act like I, you know, like I said. Like but even going back to that awareness, you know, like just having that awareness gets like you this a long week, way. I, uh, like I said, in two days, it's the anniversary of my father passing away and it's been nine years. And like, you know, I went down there today and I was thinking about it and I was like, this is the first year, though, that I feel good. Like, I'm like, I, I know I'm going to be fine. Like, there's a lot of, like, I look forward to, to life now and stuff. Like, I don't mm -hmm. really, like, I miss him, but I don't feel the absence anymore. I don't feel the need to be sad about him being gone. And mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, on Thursday, I'm probably just going to go to the river and chill by myself all day, you know, just kind of give myself a stay off the internet and, you yeah, know. Man. Well, hold that, hold that space hold uh, a little sacred for you, you know? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. your own space. But, yeah. you know, it's, uh, yeah, we're... I have my days too, everybody. Or yeah, I, I'm right there with <laughs> when you, man. I am not bueno. I feel you, man. When but, you're not bueno, you're you're. Who are you when you're not bueno? Yeah. <laughs> oh, who am I when I'm not bueno? Yeah. I don't know. Do you have an alter ego? Just my real name, probably. <laughs> you just Mark? Yeah, I'm just All right. Mark. I always say there's Mark and there's Bueno. Yeah. And Mar Bueno's who I built myself up as. Yeah. Bueno's is my my like who I am to myself. But Mark okay. is who I am to the world. There's like, something in Kali. You're giving yourself a name for that, man. There is something in that. It's, well, I feel it's like a lot of times pe we, uh, that's the one thing all this alone time is too, is like I can hear my own voice now. Mm -hmm. To being away from so much people, like a lot of times we're influenced by even good, even good influences. Like, like this whole time alone, a lot of this, like this time when we were by ourselves, by myself out there in the woods, like you, you hear the voices in your head or whatever. And you're like, that isn't even me mm. you're thinking about stuff. People have told you or like, Oh yeah. People put, you know, and it's yeah. like, like, but like I can hear my own voice now. And some days it's like, you Dang. know, yeah, that's good, man. I, 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 yeah, I appreciate that. If I, you know, um, I mean, a lot of this podcast is going to be me and majority of people I'm going to be talking to are going to be older than me. Um, and I really appreciate like learning from uh, people that have gone before me and gone through experiences because I mean, this life is a journey. And like, even though you're on your own journey, there's some crossover and some similarities. And I always want, say want it's advice, a movie you know? and you get your guest stars once in a while. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you're part of other people's stories too. And that's what's cool. And, mm -hmm. But Remember that your story, you need to nurture your own story too, you know, mm. like, because yeah. a lot of times we spend our time on other people's stories and, you know, you neglect yourself and that's where, you know, that's why I said a lot of self-love this year for sure. A lot of art. Okay. All right. Well, a lot of art made a lot yeah. of devil lady art. <laughs> <laughs> I painted my demons last year. <laughs> you painted. Uh, uh, bueno, I love I all you devil my ladies. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, man, like, yeah, that, that's another thing. Like, my whole dating scene has changed with all this shit. But, um, no, I really appreciate you, Bueno, um, yeah, having you here, bro. I really appreciate talking with you, man. Uh, when we get going more and more, we'll have to have you back on. Um, it's really interesting perspective on everything. And, um, yeah, hey, hope, man, all the love, bro. I appreciate hope I, it. I hope this helps some people, you know, or at least a little encouraging. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. 
And so, like, last, last little thing you want, like, anything you got going on, you got the art show. And I got that art show. Um, you know I'm happening? working on a website now, so you'll be able to, in the next month or so, you'll be able to buy prints of artwork okay. and stuff now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm he, just figuring out all the, I got one of my buddies teaching me all the odds and ends of that because I feel like I, I, I always like people to do stuff, but I need to think, I think I need to learn this stuff for myself, too. That way I can manage mm-hmm. all that stuff and, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be cool. I, uh, you want to give any shout outs? I like, I love shout outs on the um, shit, you know? I give a shout out to my tattoo shop, All Is One Tattoo. Yeah. If you want to get some cool stuff, there's five of us there. We all got different styles and they're all good people. Good times. Always, yeah. It's always good conversation there. Um, Zando for keeping me coffeeed up all the time and being my hangout spot this year. Um, I'm trying to get them as a sponsor. All the people, all the people <laughs> that were around last year, you know, like, like who we were part of each other's weird, that weird year we had, you know, mm-hmm. and then people kind of kept in touch in other ways, you know, like I was, uh, we were on Twitch the other night and speed was spinning his Saturday night thing. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. ended up being in the Twitch room till like one thirty of the morning. What? It, it oh, felt like man. an old Saturday night, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm happy there's still stuff like that going on. Um, who else do I want to give a shout out to? I love shout outs, man. Like um, I, I like always like giving people Apple time a shout out. Yeah, I know. Reminds me of the old Res radios, you know, or like even just like <laughs> the Thursday night radios, like kisses on your pillow, babe. Like you know, I love kisses that. On shit. Your pillow. That's my <laughs> night. That's my nighttime ones. Yeah, I love that shit. You know. Um, all the devil ladies out there, I you love know, all you the, all. All the devil mm-hmm. ladies inspired and your work. I hope to see you all when everything's good and ready to go. They're all gonna be coming up and asking, me, "Hey, is, th- is this one me?" And you know, I'm gonna be like, "Maybe." <laughs> you might be a future one, though. You know? Oh, <laughs> you could be. Yeah, there you, you go. Be. You Leave it know. open to yeah. a possibility. I wanna give a shout out to everyone who's keeping their head up right now, cause weird times. Hey. I know in five years we'll be looking back at this time as that crazy time we were wearing masks mm. and everyone was doing their thing for a while but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know all right well dope well thanks bueno um we'll have you on definitely in the future maybe let's say six months from now we'll have you on again yeah that'd be sick you know see see where the world is at then we'll get a different perspective oh yeah summertime yeah summertime love (laughs) right on (laughs) cool man all right shout out to jazzy jeff and the fresh prince for that song summertime (laughs) 